Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, we are going over all things Yuffie. That's right, she's finally out. I'm going to give you my opinion on the character in general. You know, did they treat her right? Did they not? I'm also going to go through all of her weapons, talk about what her role is. Is she somebody you, you know, going to want to stick into your team? Or maybe how does she fit into your team? So the first thing I want to just kind of look at is her weapons. And also with that kind of discuss what she is and what she isn't two things stand out when i look at yuffie's weapons ultimately we have 10 weapons available at launch here with her and here's what i've kind of surmised there are notably three different weapons that give this uh buff debuff duration extension which is a new r ability to my knowledge i think this is a very cool r ability uh the fact that you know it goes quite high you can see here at level 7, 200% means it takes whatever buff or debuff you are using and extends it by three times. I think that is pretty strong, especially if you're thinking about ways to make a debuffer also be able to do maybe damage. Um, also gives the high potency or, you know, stacking up to high potency makes it more worth it because of the fact that it lasts longer, so you're getting more bang for your buck ATB-wise. Definitely think that that is awesome that they've added this, and it is something that we're going to kind of work with her on. Other than that, the things that I think are most notable is that she is a physical damage dealer. Now, yes, every character in the game, as the game moves and progresses, can become more and more of, you know, whatever they're not good at at the moment. But at launch right now, she's a physical damage dealer why do i say that because if we look at her weapons in their totality i can tell you there are two weapons that buff one weapon that buffs physical one weapon that buffs magical there is one weapon that does magic damage or the damage is based on magic and seven of them are based on physical if we go to the free weapon that we got four point shuriken we can see here, 220% physical, not elemental damage. And again, seven weapons do physical damage like this. And only one does magic. Now, the other thing to note is that even on the buff weapon, this here, this buffs physical attack. However, it buffs for an ally of your choice and for Yuffie herself, making this extremely powerful in my opinion because it also comes with this buff extension. So if you think about it, this can easily stack. I mean, if you get it to OB6, it can stack to high and it's giving two buffs for four ATB. Also, when you think about making this go longer, you know, uh, if you can get it to, I don't know, somewhere around the 40 to 50 second mark at 100%, it'd be 52 seconds at OB6. That is extremely powerful. Now, if we look at the magic though, it only does the uh, single ally. It does not also cast it on her. So for these two reasons, I think you can see that she is definitely more, gonna be more built towards physical attack. The other thing is she has four weapons that increase physical attack or have the R ability for P attack increase. There's only two of her weapons that give magic attack increase as an R ability. With that, we can definitely kind of shape her up as uh, some sort of buffer slash debuffer, but also a physical attacker. And then also she has a pretty well-rounded elemental kit. She has two different weapons that give our abilities for ice potency, one for wind, one for earth, and one for fire. Not bad at all. And then she also has a materia ability on one of the weapons that give a lightning bonus. So she really kind of has all of those covered, which is good for a new unit since she hasn't had time to be featured on many banners. If you are a Yuffie fan, I would not be disappointed whatsoever in her kit. I think her kit is fantastic for a character that just launched. If you've been around for a while, whether or not you're going to be able to fit her in your team right away, I think that uh, we're going to have to kind of maybe look at that a little bit because She's not going to fit in without getting some of these weapons kind of leveled up. And some of these weapons, because they create a role with her that kind of conflicts with some of your other characters that you're using, it might make for some awkward situations. 
let's go ahead and go through all of these weapons one by one and i'll give you my thoughts on them generally speaking this is the banner weapon arctic star i will cover this more in a banner review but we've already kind of hit on it a little bit it gives a physical attack increase to a single ally as well as herself it also has our abilities for boost physical attack and buff debuff extension uh, for materia over here it's physical oriented and i think that it's a solid weapon four point shuriken over here is physical attack decrease so this is a debuff weapon and although it's not as good as the weapons that tifa is usually using for this it's still pretty good and if you're going to use her primarily i wouldn't be disappointed with this debuff boomerang this is the first elemental potency weapon that we'll look at it's got fire potency for an r ability also physical attack but this is where i think she really shines the fact that she has fire resist decrease a lightning resist decrease and an ice resist decrease makes her probably like okay i would say this tifa i think is still the best debuffer for um defense right for living debuffing physical attack magical attack uh sephiroth with kuja spirit blade is probably up there quite a bit as well however i think yuffie is going to be like on the teams where you're trying to get high scores she's going to fit in amazingly because of these breaches that she's got built into these weapons these are fantastic along with the fact that especially if it's a physical team being able to buff her own physical attack plus an allies that is going to be meta defining in my opinion so i think this is also an amazing weapon although niche because it's really when you need to do fire damage pinwheel here we've got the ice resist so this is the boomerang version of ice and only it doesn't have quite as good of our abilities going with the hp increase but that is okay um and and you'll see this is a trend most of her weapons have physical attack boost for the materials and you know that kind of makes sense going with her kit razor ring here is the one weapon that i think right now i would steer clear of it's the earth magic damage but the problem is she only has this weapon and one other one that innately boost magic attack with an R ability. Um, not saying you can't use those. I just, there's so much more flexibility with her physical damage and earth potency is just never something that I'm a big fan of at the moment anyway. Uh, here, you know, it's got boosts that go along with it quite nicely. Uh, the weapon's fine. It's just not something I would be gunning for. Crystal Cross, this is the magic buffing version of the Arctic Star. Only, as I stated earlier, I don't think it's quite as good. Why? Because, yeah, it gives the magic attack buff, but it's just not as good to only put it on one person instead of two. Uh, plus, I like, you know, boost magic attack is fine as an R ability. Boost ability potency is fine, but I'd really rather see it be boost magic ability potency. I think that's what this weapon is kind of missing uh, for Materia here. This is, you know, perfectly fine with the weapon. So, although again, I think this is an okay weapon, not something I would be gunning for. Wind Slash, this is the Thunder Breach weapon. So now we have covered all three of her main breach weapons, which I think is probably one of the strongest things in her kit at the moment. Again, we've got the buff debuff extension, our ability, which I think is going to be very solid, especially in dungeon ranking scenarios where you're trying to do the most damage you can. You're really trying to kind of speed through the boss waves. Uh, I think this is going to be really good. Here we have Twin Viper, and this is the weapon that I'm probably the most on the fence about how I feel about it. Uh, physical damage as usual. Um, our abilities are boost attack and boost limit break potency. I'm not really a big fan of boost limit break potency. You can see here at OB6 though, um, the boost attack is actually pretty nice. But this is what I'm most uh, wondering about is the ailment poison. So at OB6, it has a 70% chance of poisoning the enemy for 26 seconds. And as we've seen with different enemies that we've faced, I feel like poison can be really strong or you, something you can ignore. It kind of depends on how much damage the poison does and how often the poison ticks. That doesn't seem to be something that they tell us about with this weapon. So some testing is definitely necessary, but I could see this weapon being very good for DPS and boss fights, especially those longer ones. For the materials, it's kind of all over the place. It's got one physical attack, one magical attack, and one attack. 
not a big fan of that here, but especially, I mean, look at the stats. There's a huge disparity in the physical attack versus magical attack stats. Um, but this poison, that's going to be what makes or breaks this weapon, in my opinion. Moving on, we have Spiral Shuriken. This is a physical ice damage weapon because, hey, if nothing else, this game loves to give people the ability to do ice damage. Um, noted by the fact that we've had two banners with ice arcanums on them. Uh, we've given at least three different characters ice weapons. We now have two different weapons that can do ice breach up to high potency. She has two ice potency R abilities. So it, I guess it's just, uh, this is just where they want to take us. And I think it's a fine weapon. Um, the only problem being that we've got so much other ways to do ice damage. I don't know if it makes the cut. And last, we have Magic Shuriken. And this is a wind weapon. Again, uh, I would really like to see this be physical attack. And then again, it's not the end of the world that it's just regular attack. I think it's a fine weapon. Nothing really too special to shout out here. I think the standout weapons for her are the breach weapons and the buff weapons. So the role that I see Yuffie filling is a let's do maximum amount of damage against whatever. And I'm thinking back to like during the Christmas event when you're just trying to do as much ice damage as possible to rack up the highest score, right? Uh, most of those teams didn't even use a healer. I kind of look at her in that same boat. You put her in when you were like, I need to smash this boss as fast as possible or I need to rack up as many points as I can. Something like that, usually where a score might be involved. Why? Because I'm looking at weapons like Arctic Star and I'm seeing, okay, this is a dual buff weapon, right? We've also got buff extensions, great. We've got three different types of breaches. So I'm looking at, we can make everybody in our team do more damage. We can make the enemies take more damage. I don't really care about anything else in her kit. Those two alone make her viable. As for whether or not I will be using her, man, it's really going to depend on how I do with my free rolls that I've got. Uh, another thing I want to point out here is that if you level her up, I've got her to level 55, uh, which, you know, I'm trying to take her all the way to 65, but obviously that's quite a chore. But as you unlock her nodes, you will get... Um, draws weapon draws for her and so i'm going to go ahead and claim those now and like i said we're looking at 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 50 50 weapon draws so i think that'll be pretty good and then there's another five here uh as a mission for unlocking 20 nodes in her character stream so or sorry 10 ultimately so we're looking at 60 weapon draws um i will be doing those in another video but Based on what I get from there, that will probably determine how I look at her going forward. Uh, if I get the breach weapons and stuff like that, I'm way more likely to try to use her. I don't know how I feel about wishlisting some of those weapons over other weapons that I'm currently trying to OB6, uh, but that will be something that I tackle in a future video. Let me know what you guys think. If you're really excited about Yuffie, if for some reason it was disappointing to you, subscribe for future content if you're not already. I appreciate everyone's support, and as always, thanks for watching.